Okay, thank you for joining me. My phone shut off. Um, Isaiah 15 through 18 is a starting point. Holy Father, teach us your decrees. Pour your Holy Spirit over us. Give us Issachar discernment, Holy Father, abundantly. Give us jolted dreams and visions, Holy Father. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Isaiah 15 through 18, an oracle concerning Moab. Ar in Moab is ruined, destroyed in a night. Ker in Moab is ruined, destroyed in a night. Dibon goes up into it goes up to its temple, to its high places to weep. Moab wails over Nebo and Medeba. Every head is shaved and every beard is cut off. In the streets they wear sackcloth. On their roofs and in the public squares they all wail. Prostrate with weeping, Heshbon and Eliale cry out. Their voices are heard all the way to Jahaz. Therefore the armed men of Moab cry out and their hearts are faint. My heart cries out over Moab. Her fugitives flee as far as Zor, as far as Eglath. Shalisheya, they go up the way of Luhith, weeping as they go on the road to Horonaim. They lament their destruction. The waters of Nimrim are dried up, and the grass is withered. The vegetation is gone, and nothing green is left. So the wealth they have acquired and stored up, they carry away over the ravine of the poplars. Their outcry echoes along the border of Moab. Their wailing reaches as far as Eglaim, and their lamentation as far as Beer Elim. Turning page. Diamond, diamond's waters are full of blood, but I will bring still more upon Diamond, a lion upon the fugitive of Moab, and upon those who remain in the land. Send lambs as tribute to the ruler of the land from Selah across the desert to the mount of the daughter of Zion. Like flittering birds pushed from the nest, so are the women of Moab at the fords of Arnon. Give us counsel, render a decision, make their shadow like night at high noon. Hide the fugitives, do not betray the fugitives. Let the Moabite fugitives stay with you by their shelter from the destroyer. The oppressor will come to an end and destruction will cease. The aggressor will vanish from the land. In love a throne will be established and faithfulness a man will sit on it. One from the house of David, one who is judging seeks judgment. One who in judging seeks justice and speeds the cause of righteousness. We have heard of Moab's pride, her overweening pride and conceit, her pride and her insolence, but her boasts are empty. Therefore the Moabite wail. They wail together for Moab, lament and grieve for the new, for the men of Ker Heresheth. The fields of Heshbon wither, the vines of Sibma also. The rulers of the nations have trampled down the choicest vines which once reached jazer and spread toward the desert their shoots spread out and went as far as the sea so weep as jazer weeps for the vines of sibma o heshban o elia i drench you with tears the shouts of joy over you ripened fruit and over your harvest have been stilled joy and gladness are taken away from the orchards no one sings or shouts in the vineyards no one treads out the wine at the presses, for I have put an end to the shouting. My heart laments for Moab like a, sh like a harp, my inmost being for Ker Haresheth. When Moab appears at her high place, she only wears herself out. When she goes to her shrine to pray, it is to no avail. This is a word that the Holy Lord has already spoken concerning Moab, but now the Holy Lord, within three years, as a servant bound by contract, would count them. Moab's splendor and all her many people will be despised, and her survivors will be very few and feeble. An oracle concerning Damascus. See, Damascus will no longer be a city, but will become a heap of ruins. The city of Aror will be deserted, deserted and left to flocks which will lie down, with no one to make them afraid. The fortified city will disappear from Ephraim, and royal power from Damascus. The remnant of Aram will be like the glory of the Israelites, declares the Holy Lord Almighty. In that day, the glory of Jacob will fade. The fat of his body will waste away. It will be as when a reaper gathers the standing grain and the harvest, and harvests the grain with his arm, as when a man gleans heads of grain in the valley of Rephaim. Yet some gleanings will remain, as when an olive tree is beaten, leaving two or three olives on the topmost branches, four or five on the fruitful boughs declares the Holy Lord, the God of Israel. In that day, men will look to their Maker and turn their eyes to the Holy One of Israel. They will 
not look to the altars, the work of their hands, and they will have no regard for the Asherah poles and the incense altars their fingers have made. In that day, <clears throat> their strong cities, which they left because of the Israelites, will be like places abandoned to the thickets and undergrowth, and all will be desolation. You have forgotten your holy God, your Savior. You have not remembered the rock, your fortress. Therefore, though you set out the finest plants and plant imported vines, though on the day you set them out, you will make them grow, and on the morning when you plant them, you will bring them to bud. Yet the harvest will be as nothing in the day of this season, incurable pain. All oh, the raging of, the, of many nations, they rage like the raging sea. All oh, the uproar of the peoples, they roar like the uproaring of great waters. All of the peoples roar like the roar of surging waters. When he rebukes them, they will flee far away, driven by the wind like chaff on the hills, like tumbleweed before a gale. On the, in the evening, sudden terror before the morning, they are gone. This is the portion of those who loot us, the lot of those who plunder us. Woe to the land of whirring wings along, with, along the rivers of Cush, which send envoys by sea and papyrus boats over the water. Go swift messengers to a people, tall and smooth-skinned to a people feared far and wide, an aggressive nation of strange speech, whose land is divided by rivers. All you people of the world, you who live on the earth, when a banner is raised on the mountains, you will see it. When a trumpet sounds, you will hear it. This is what the Holy Lord says to me. I will remain quiet and will look on from my dwelling place, like shimmering heat in the sunshine, <clears throat> like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For before the harvest, when the blossom is gone and the flower becomes a ripening grape, he will cut off the shoots with pruning knives and cut down and take away the spreading branches. They will all be left to the mountain, birds of prey, and to the wild animals. The birds will feed on them all summer, the wild animals all winter. At that time, gifts will be brought to the Holy Lord Almighty from a people tall and smooth-skinned, from a people feared far and wide, an aggressive nation of strange speech, whose land is divided by rivers. The gift will be brought to Mount Zion, the place of the name of the Holy Lord Almighty. Amen. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you. Galatians one, oh, my phone doesn't turn off. One, one through twenty-four. Paul, an apostle, sent not for men nor by man, but by Jesus Christ and our holy God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers with me to the churches in Galatia. Grace and peace to you from our holy God our Father and the holy Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our holy God and Father, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of our holy Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are, some people are throwing you into confusion. You are trying, and are trying to pervert the gospel of our holy Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned, as we have already said. So now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. Am I now trying to win the approval of men or of holy God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of our holy Christ. I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preached is not something that man made up. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of our holy God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Juda Judaism beyond many Jews of my own age and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when our holy God set me apart from birth and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his holy son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not consult any man. Nor did I go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went immediately to Arabia and later returned to Damascus. After three years, oh, then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Peter and stayed with him fifteen days. I saw none of the other apostles, only James and the Holy and the Lord's brother. I assure you before our holy God that I am writing you is no lie. What am I writing you is no lie. 
Later I went to Syria and Sicilia. I was personally unknown to the church of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard the report. The man who for formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they praised our holy God because of me. Amen. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Holy Father. Psalm 58, 1 through 11, for the director of music, to the tune of Do Not Destroy of David of Mitchkem. Do the rulers indeed speak justly? Do, do you judge uprightly among men? No, in heart you devise injustice, and your hands meet out violence on the earth. Even from birth the wicked go astray. From the womb they are wayward and speak lies. Their venom is like the venom of a snake, like that of a cobra that has stopped its ears, that will not heed the tune of the charmer, however skillful the enchanter may be. Break the teeth of their mouths, O holy God. Tear out, O holy Lord, the fangs of the lions. Let them vanish like water that flows away. When they draw the bowl, let their arrows be blunted, like a slug melting away as it moves along, like a stillborn child, may they not see the sun. Before your pots can fill the heat of the thorns, whether they be green or dry, the wicked will be swept away. The righteous will be glad when they are avenged, when they bathe their feet in the blood of the wicked. Then men will say, Surely the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a holy God who judges the earth. Amen. Praise you, Holy Father. Thank you, Holy Father for your righteous holy judgments. Proverbs 23, 12. Apply your heart to instructions and your ears to the words of knowledge. Proverbs is so powerful. I used to read the whole book, well, no, half the book, in one day and the other half in another, and it really opens your ears to the Holy Father. Holy Father, create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Clean our lives. Clean every department of our lives. Pour your Holy Spirit over us. Give us joy to dreams and visions, Holy Father, I pray. Give us an abundance of holy wisdom, revelation, knowledge, understanding, music, our discernment, and holy prophetical insight. Father God, pro forgive us our sins, the sins of our children, grandchildren, all the way back to the first, the first man, Holy Father Adam, and vindicate us and recompense us sevenfold for everybody that has stolen from us, Holy Father. Thank you for this honor to read your word thank you for 120 years of life plus you promised us that isaiah 53 5 we are healed completely body soul and spirit from the marrow of our bones out to our skin in jesus holy name amen